again on my own. Cruising down life's big highway, I'm a cruising, cruising down the road. I ain't never turning back, 'cause I've got far to go. Welcome to Paradise Love and Veggies. I'm Samantha James. I am so glad to be back with you in season four. I thought we'd start off the season by me taking you on a little garden tour, like I do for people who come and visit my garden. Come on, let's go. These here are some lettuce baskets that I made up. I got this from Farmer Nikki. She does this, and it's a really cool idea because it allows you to plant just little starts and then they grow into a beautiful basket and you can just clip the leaves of the lettuce that are ready and make yourself a little salad. Over here in front of the shop I've got my peppers and my tomatoes growing. I was really excited to have some friends gift me some of their old feed bags so that I could get the tomatoes in a safe place. They seem to be doing well, and while I'm talking to you, I see there is the first little tomato growing. I am so excited. This old radio flyer wagon I put to good use by planting calendulas in it. It's really rusty, but it's still holding on, and I just think it looks so adorable, and it always makes me smile when I see it. Here I've got some orange thyme, which is a little variety of culinary thyme thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. Here's the top side of my herb garden. There's the back side of the soil area of the farm. This is my apple mint area. And you can see these weeds here I totally need to do something with. But apple mint is one of my most favorite herbs, and it is just beautiful in tea. Oh my gosh, it's the best flavor, and I've got, as you can see here, a whole bunch of it growing. It's the first to come on in the spring as far as mints go, but it's also the first to kind of go bad. It usually starts, the leaves get a little bit of moldy, and I think that's because they hold a lot of water moisture. This is my first honeysuckle. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It needs to find a home, but it's still in a big pot. I've got some lovely cilantro over here. If you've never picked fresh cilantro, it is just amazing. The smell, oh my gosh, it is just so delicious. This is a variety of honeysuckle, but it's actually a native honeysuckle, not a hybrid and it blooms really pretty little flowers and they die out pretty quick. You can kind of see here the last of the last little bits of the white flower. This is my willow tree that a friend gave me years ago, some branches, and it's doing really well. There's the uh, peppermint over there. We'll get to that. Here's the uh, other side here of the apple mint area. And I've got, oh my goodness, so many different types of mint. I've got uh, lemon balm, which is a type of mint. Lemon balm, it just grows like crazy. I've got this most beautiful pineapple mint. And if you've never had pineapple mint, you definitely need to try some. It's delicious in salads, makes a beautiful tea. It's just really, really beautiful stuff. I do have some peppermint in here in the weeds. Regular straight old peppermint. Again, delicious for teas. Mmm, smells so good. Wish I had smell o vision so you could smell it. Mmm. I've got some chocolate mint up here on the hill. I don't know if you can see. Kind of zoom in on that. Chocolate mint looks really nice. It smells really good as well. I've got some spearmint, not to be confused with peppermint. It's here. There's a difference. So this is the peppermint leaf here. 
it's wide and the spearmint as you can see is a much thinner much thinner leaf got some majorum right here and some oregano very similar oops sorry I'm in the shot there You've, it's got very very similar leaves but the oregano is a little bit smaller then the majorum is a little bit bigger I've got some rosemary up here on the hill that was one of the worst places I could have ever put it but it seems to be pretty happy there so I guess that's all that matters I've got some sage over here the sage plant is doing beautiful many many years ago I pulled this up and it came back and it came back with a vengeance it's just beautiful I love love the sage so just a shot back we're kind of working our way down the steps here that's a valerian flower right there from valerian root plant here's some sweet william I love these flowers these are some of my favorite flowers to actually put in my hair in the summertime I love them there's more lemon balm I got wild lemon balm growing everywhere but again worse things could grow I've got some beautiful cat nip, not to be confused with cat mint, which we're going to see in a minute. This is cat nip, and of course, my little Dewey kitty, he loves it. Got some beautiful poppies here. These just started showing up last year at the farm, and I really embraced it and uh, collected seeds and did some replanting. This area here, that just all grew wild this year again. Just like last year and <laughs> absolutely love the look at it got a beautiful comfrey plant here getting ready to flower those flowers are really really beautiful that plant is just really turned into something amazing that was given to me by a friend of mine when it was just about a four inch plant and it is just gigantic as you can see now okay so we're continuing down the garden path here my poor rhubarb it got blown away the other day in the wind super bummed I need to clean it up I haven't done that yet um, that's there there's some borage right there the flowers are edible those are really gorgeous we'll take a look at some more of those here in a minute my flower gardens doing good needs a little bit more cleanup but trying to keep up with everything the best I can here's a view just looking over the garden we're coming up to this area here I've talked about many many times um, finding this old wagon and uh, put around these blocks a couple years ago and they just they look so amazing and I love when everything starts growing it it just looks so lush and gorgeous oh and this reminds me so here um, this plant right here this is actually cat mint so we had cat nip just a minute ago and then this is the leaves on the um, cat mint and it's got a really really beautiful smell as well this here is my my other favorite honeysuckle it was taken from just a twig start from that first one I showed you and it is just doing amazing I love it so much it is just one of my favorite plants these uh, succulents here are growing over really nice over this concrete border here talked before about softening uh, concrete up and it's just looking really lovely this year I've got my green onions here or chives as I like to call them because I don't really actually pull out the roots I just let them keep going they're starting to get flowers on them when that happens the stem actually gets really hard and it's not very yummy to eat but the ones that are soft and pliable they're really good to eat I've also got some basil planted in here there's a little basil plant a couple three different four different kinds here some Thai basil that, <laughs> that basil plant doesn't look very good but these guys look really good they're doing really happy one of my favorite things about this area during the summer is that all along this border here I've got Shasta daisies and when they start to bloom they just look amazing they're just starting to get flowers and I am so excited about it 
I can't wait to see those little pops of white color throughout the garden. These two pots just got moved today and they're pretty sad. This is actually a hydrangea that has been eaten by slugs. This is second year hydrangea, so right now it should be about 18 inches tall, but as you can see, it's certainly not. This one over here is even in worse shape, but I'm hoping because I moved them out of some tundra where they had kind of gotten buried, I'm hoping that now the slugs won't bother them and that they'll be able to grow again. My strawberry plants are doing amazing this year. Although I was a little bit concerned earlier, when I came down to the garden, I actually heard a rustling in the leaves, and I swear it was a rodent of some sort. So I'm a little bit concerned, but you can see all those little strawberries. They're just getting ready to bust out, and I cannot wait to eat some. I've had a couple, but uh, not very many. But oh my goodness, there's going to be so many this year. I'm so excited. So if you were here, you get to have some strawberries in a couple weeks. Here's the front side of those Shasta daisies. And you can see I've got them all along the border there. And then they go all the way up this walkway. And, oh, I can't wait to show them to you guys when they start growing in because they look so amazing. This is my potato area. Just kind of covering up with straw as soon as they grow. I don't know if we can see any over here. But let's go over and see. Oh! <laughs> Here's, here is a uh, slug-eaten potato plant. Those darn slugs are just the worst. Oh, there's one right there. Can you see it? Ugh, gross. Ugh, nasty. That's the culprit right there. I'm gonna fling him off. Ugh, ugh, gross. I'm gonna fling him off in the field somewhere. But there's like thousands and billions and trillions of slugs out in the field, so it's really hard to think I'm ever going to get them all, but Lord knows I try. So, right here on the back side of the potatoes, we've got my dahlias, and I'm super excited. If you remember this story from last season, I had actually planted this whole area last year of dahlia plants, and... I think only seven of them came up, but I was lucky enough this year to get from my friend Les some more starts or some tubers. So um, we planted those and they're all coming up really lovely. Some of the ones in the back here you can see are super tiny, but they are coming up. If the slugs will leave them alone, we'll have lots of dahlias this year. I planted this lavender area last year and it's really starting to grow in. I really love the look at it. I was a little bummed because my main cornerstone lavender actually ended up dying out. So I paid some money for this one just so it would be kind of caught up in the same age as these ones I started last year from seed. And you can see they're starting to get, they're starting to get flowers on them. They're so pretty. Mmm, they smell so good. Yum. Mmm. Oh, I love lavender. All right, well, here's the uh, back side of oh, what was the Swiss chard and my kale area. And it's kind of been a little bit turned over. I've got some cauliflower growing here on this other side. And I think I'm going to have to pull all this kale and Swiss chard really, really soon because it's just, it's ready. It's time. I've cut off the flowering part so many times. It's just, it's, they're ready to go. Not quite sure what I'm going to put there yet. Walking down the path here, I'm really happy how this area is turning out for the year. I had this idea to plant some snap peas with some nasturtiums in between. And although the nasturtiums aren't flowering yet, they're doing pretty well. And I can just see the bright colors that are going to climb up the fence when they get ready. And, it's, and as far as the snap peas go, they are starting to grow and I've already been harvesting off them and they just look amazing. You may remember that I had planned on doing the world's largest raised bed. I thought better of it because I really didn't want to have to put in the extra energy and money to get soil to fill up this whole area. So I ended up planting a whole bunch of different flowers. I've got some perennials, some annuals, and some biennials planted. So I think once it starts growing in, it's going to look really amazing. But right now, it just looks like a whole bunch of weeds and a bunch of dirt.
This area over here is red beets and a number of different varieties of onions and they're growing pretty well. I'm pretty excited. I ended up doing some extra seeding because you can see they're kind of spotty here and I'm not sure why they grew in so spotty but that was pretty disappointing so I actually planted some more seeds and you can see they're just starting to come up so hopefully I'll have some increased area of beets here as well as the onions I could see they're starting to come up some more there too so yum gotta love a fresh onion and a fresh beet okay so we're moving over I've got some cute little broccolis planted here in this area it's a little broccoli I think I've got 10 of them there and then I've got carrots turnips and some kohlrabi <laughs> planted uh, right next to my garlic area here okay so continuing on down the path here look at that I just have to stop and say look at that beautiful snap pea oh my goodness yum I can't wait oh here's there's a pea can you see it there's one. Oh my goodness they are so yummy and tasty okay so got artichokes over here it's the first time I've ever planted them and a friend of mine grows them and said make sure the soil is sandy enough so I ended up bringing buckets of soil down and adding it to the soil that was already there and I've got eight of them planted so pretty excited to see what happens to them oh that reminds me here we're coming up to another borage Borage are a beautiful perennial and they're self seeders so it makes it really easy if you want to add stuff to your garden. These flowers are totally edible. They use them a lot of times on wedding cakes and they are just, it's such a gorgeous plant. They're a little bit prickly but they work really well in vases too. This is my green bean area and up against the uh, wire mesh over there I've got some climbing beans. They've had a really hard time with the slugs but they seem to be doing okay let's take a little walk over here and see how they're doing oh look already got some hoo -hoo. I got some flowering going on oh that's beautiful that's a scarlet runner bean those are one of my favorites with some bird poop on the leaf you can see here the destruction of the slugs all that slime but plants get pretty tough and my money's on the plant but wait a minute <laughs> There's another slug in there. I gotta get that. I'll be the first to admit that no matter how early I start in the spring, it seems like I always end up getting overwhelmed with weeds. And my raspberry area is no exception. These raspberries I got last year from a friend. They were all just starts from his yard. And I really need to weed this area so that when the flowers start coming on, well, the berries, you can actually get to them but they look pretty good considering I haven't touched this area in a while. When I went through my big planting, I realized I had run out of space and I had to plant some greens. So I ended up scarfing out this area, which now contains some collard greens, three types of kale and some Swiss chard. This area here is hopefully going to be zucchini and some cucumbers and some different squashes and some pumpkins. If again, I can keep the slugs out of it. My cherry orchard there on the hill is doing really, really well, and I'm super happy with how it's turned out considering I just planted those little babies last year. I got this little addition from a free roadside find, and I couldn't help myself, so I planted some sunflowers in it and a new variety of calendula that I got. I'm excited to see how they look when they start growing. Beyond the green beans and the raspberries is my well, what I'm calling a picnic area this year, which is extremely overgrown right now, but there's the hogo culture in the area, which we're going to talk about next week. Speaking of next week, I'm really excited about the show. Have you ever had to buy a replacement part for your car and it came from a used part dealer or from a salvage yard? We're going to actually go to a salvage yard and learn more about the business and what that entails and how a used part ends up becoming your part. Thanks for watching Paradise Loving Veggies today. We'll see you next time. I'm Samantha James. I ain't never turning back. Cause I've got